This week we decide to tackle the abandoned canals, those where you will never find another boat. No, there's no water. But have we taken on more than we can actually handle? Um, now we've got a bit of a problem. We've got a long journey today, we're leaving Knoll. And we're going to be going to places where other boats generally don't tend to go. But first of all, we've got an exciting stop right by the bridge in Alton. Keeping my nature journal for a few months, I discovered the Edith Holders. I didn't know about Edith Holders before. So I have become really interested and fascinated by her and her life. And she lived around here. But where we're going today, we're going to do a short walk from the house that she lived in where she sat and wrote that diary. I can't wait. So about to go under the M42. Good home moorings. I love the design of this. Look at the top, it's got it, what looks like its little own observatory. Oh, that window's gorgeous. They've done that really well. So we're coming into Catherine de Vargas now. This used to be a big stop off for boaters in days gone by because it had all the services. It was quite a central stop off. This is an interesting shape, this boat. drinking all this glorious green because very soon we're going to be hitting the land of urbanization it's going to become very urban this is the bridge where i'm going to be walking over to kinnerton road so we're just going to have to try and get a pin in this towpath we've moored up just we're near a bridge, There's, there aren't any boats coming and it won't take me long. So I'm going to walk to Kinnerton Road, find her house and film it. And I just need to find a post box as well to post my own journals. And Zephyr is coming with me. This way, Zephyr. Go over up here. Both of these lights. St. Margaret's Church. is Kinnerton Green Road and I've got to look for number 15. I decided before I started filming the front of her house, it was only polite that I knocked on the door and asked for permission to film. Hi, you are currently being recorded. 
After the current resident had got over her initial surprise, she said I could film, which was really kind of her. Now, the oldest photograph we've got of this house was taken in 1920, and Edith Holden had left the house since then, but I don't think it would have changed that much. The word Gowan must be significant to the Holdens because they named two of their houses Gowan Bank. Gowan is another name for the word daisy. What is really incredible for me now, I'm about to post my journal in this letter box and I can see Edith's house from there. Now we've got to get back and we've got to continue this mammoth journey we're on today heading towards the abandoned canal. So it's goodbye to Gowan Bank and now we continue our journey onwards. I'm going to quickly rustle up a garlic, tomato, red pepper and spicy soup so that will really warm us up when we come to our next stop. That's the soup on the go now, that's on the stove and we're about 45 minutes away from the service point. It is much more industrial here now and uh, everyone's so friendly though. We always notice that when we come into Birmingham, everyone's really friendly. Uh, but some chap on the towpath just worried us and said like that and said, good luck with it mate, looking at our boat as if, I don't know, I don't know if it was just a friendly gesture or Oh my God, you're a boat going this way. Good luck to you. <laughs> but um, we'll, we'll see, won't we? It's nice at the moment. It's very quiet. We're trying to get to the Anglesey branch and obviously we've started at Knoll and we're going to be following a route that the guidebook said you just won't see another boat on. So we're curious. What is it about these canals that no other boater wants to come and visit? just before this lock on the left hand side so that's our filling up with water spot our lunch spot washing up the dirty dishes spot and then moving on again this is a beautiful old wharf I mean this looks pretty abandoned wow it's filling on but nothing's coming out um, yeah, this is not really a service point anymore. I don't think the water's not working. Okay, we're leaving the service point. We've renamed it the serviceless point. The lock that we'll go through. We are going to have some lunch first. Spicy tomato and red pepper soup later. We're making our way through Camp Hill locks and trying to find a decent place to keep the boat for the night. Bridge 103 apparently is the water point. 102, so that means after the next bridge we should have the water point. It's 102A now, so it must be, oh, I think it's on the right hand side here. Where's the tap? Is that a tap in the corner? Keys. Check. Oh. Alright, oh, hang on a minute. We're gonna have to get through the brambles to see the tap. Okay. No. There's no water. But waterless, we just carry on.
taxi cars you might get glimpses of just up ahead are on Spaghetti Junction. So we are about to go under Spaghetti Junction. Past five, we have got this another set of blocks to do. I think it's like 11 lock. I can hardly speak, I'm so tired. We have 11 locks which we're going up, and it's been an incredible journey, it really has. It's been such an experience. But we need to find somewhere that we're happy and we feel is secure enough to moor in overnight. So that's what we're going to go and do. Right, let's see how far we can get before we lose complete light. This cottage up there. Stop to the next lock. We are on a landing, but we're going to get going first thing in the morning, and there's no boats around here. We'll stop because it's just a little bit too dark, and we don't want to have to do the locks. We're going to wait here and go first thing in the morning. So I've had the best sleep I've had in ages because it was so quiet because no one comes down here. Not even Puny and Smek turned up. Unbelievable. Right, let's get through these locks. And so on a beautiful fresh autumn morning with a heron for company, we continued our journey to find out why on earth these canals are not being used. The nice thing about being near a city is you get really tame birds and I spent a few moments with this crow. I absolutely love corvids, they're one of my favourite bird families and it was just so lovely feeding this one. And of course Zephyr didn't want to be left out either so she mopped up the crumbs. super. Fine to get through although locals have told me that in the summer the water levels are very very low here and they think that's what puts boats off but if there is water in the pounds or <laughs> if there is water in the pounds then these looks are brilliant. Just make sure you fill up with water before you come down this way because you've seen the trouble we've had with the two water points. 
but let's see if this works. Oh, they're just all the way up to the top. Wow. Did you have much luck fishing behind us? baby changing sign. Whilst filling up with water we had another look at the map and to our horror we discovered that the angle seeker now we were heading towards was shut due to lock work. So we made a quick change of plan and decided we were going to head towards the Canuck Extension Canal. The views across Birmingham are just spectacular on both sides centre over there and amongst all the trees. We were then treated to some of the most spectacular sights we have had cruising. Underneath the towering and magnificent Chimney Bridge. So this is called Chimney Bridge. You can see why, can't you? alongside the M5 motorway, which felt like we were in an additional lane. Wow. And through warm, rich and vibrant displays of autumn. And the only boats we saw the whole time were just two working boats. No moored boats, no moving boats. It's hanging out in the middle. So we're going to struggle to get past it, but we'll see how that goes. They're building a wildlife habitat to go along the edges. And into here, they plant the reeds and grasses. See the waste in the canal planting them. Oh, I love it. Well done. Big thumbs up from me, CRT. Love that. Kindly moving the boat for us so we can get through. Which doesn't look easy. That's kinder than they're moving it. Not far now, we'll be in Warsaw. This has been an amazing journey. quite silted up here. You can see it we're trying to get through it, it's churning up and it's that black underneath. If we get through this we'll make it easier for any other boaters that want to come down here. And it's just beautiful. Look at the awesome colours. Oh wow I love it. But then something a bit more than silt got caught in our prop. Oh, When we finally entered Warsaw Basin for the night, I'm going to be honest with you, I was worried that we would have people jumping on the roof of the boat and throwing things at it. But for a town, it was so quiet. And again, I had an amazing night's sleep. Bye bye, geese. You were nice and quiet. I didn't even hear you this morning. Very well behaved. All of you, very well behaved. Then we made our way through the Warsaw set of locks. This 
is a boatman's rest and it was built in the 1900s and it's one of only two boatman's rests that are left on the system. Goodbye to the Warsaw guy, that was fine. In two and a half days we had travelled seven different canals through 32 locks across 32 miles past two moving boats and just a handful of moored ones. Why these canals are not being used is still a mystery to me, but I hope they don't become forgotten. Boat's coming away. because we'd like to moor here. No boat or human being. We're just in the middle of nature. It just seems too good to be true, but let's just see. On the map, it looked the same as every other liquid lane. Yet no one ventured, no one came, not like they did before. A chimney bridge, spaghetti sky, hills of locks where herons fly, all boatless to the passerby, green water, nothing more. But cut the surface with a bow, fly over motors, under bow, through reed beds like a fairy tale, unlock the secret door. Among the crows and demure deer, beneath the carpet, waters clear. Birdsong fills the hedges here, a perfect place to moor, much better than before. <laughs> 